Hi, I'm Eric Gutendijk, Assistant Professor of Political Science at the University of Memphis. I'll be discussing an article that I co-authored with Antoine Banks, Associate Professor of Government at the University of Maryland. Our article is titled Emotional Rescue, How Affect Helps Partisans Overcome Collective Action Problems. This article addresses a simple question. Given the incentive to free ride, why does party identification motivate citizens to participate in politics? Scholars theorize that social identification can help to overcome collective action problems by blurring the lines between individuals and groups. But we point out that group identity doesn't obscure this line entirely. Group identifiers certainly retain the capacity to think as individuals. So we are interested in understanding what mechanism allows partisans to flip this switch from individual-based thinking to group-based thinking. We theorize that while partisans may think like selfish individuals, their party identities lead them to feel different emotions than non-identifiers and therefore act collectively. Our model integrates ideas from three important theories of emotion, intergroup emotions theory, affective intelligence theory, and the broaden and build theory of positive emotions. We argue that party identification narrows the perceptual field in politics for millions of individual citizens, each of whom have essentially zero chance of affecting the outcome of any given election, down to just two parties, each of which, of course, have an enormous impact on the outcome of every single election. This gives partisans a feeling of greater control over political outcomes than they would otherwise have if they just thought about politics as individual citizens. And this feeling of greater control shapes the emotions that they experience when they think about politics, leading them to feel more anger and enthusiasm as opposed to fear when, when they consider uh, politics. Research has also shown that these distinct emotions have distinct cognitive and behavioral effects. Whereas anger tends to propel people to action without much thought, fear triggers careful cognitive processing, but doesn't necessarily produce all that much action. Positive emotions like enthusiasm are associated with, with exploration, interest, and approach behavior. As a result, enthusiasm should lead people to get involved in politics, but also to think about politics without second-guessing the utility of their behavior, as they might if they were feeling feel fearful or anxious about politics. So in summary, we expect stronger partisans, partisans to experience a different mix of emotions than weaker partisans and independents, and because these emotions trigger distinct cognitive processes and behaviors, we ex expect stronger partisans to think and behave differently than weaker partisans and independents. We test our theory uh, using a survey experiment and analysis of American national election studies. Our experiment is designed uh, to determine whether party-based thinking causes people to experience different emotions than individual thinking. And we do this by simply priming them to think about politics as an individual citizen versus by priming them to think about politics through the lens of their party. We then look to see whether this pattern that emerges in our experimental data also emerges in survey data. Uh, and we build on this by then running mediation analyses to test whether party identification strength affects emotions which affect uh, actual participation in politics. Our experimental findings show that when people are primed to think about politics from the perspective of parties, rather than thinking about politics from the perspective of an individual citizen, they tend to express greater control over politics. And as predicted, stronger partisans are more likely to express anger and enthusiasm rather than fear as a result of feeling this sense of greater control over politics. We then test our theory using data from the American National Election Studies conducted between 1984 and 2004, uh, and we find a very similar pattern. Again, we see that stronger party identifiers are more likely to report feelings of anger and enthusiasm uh, toward political candidates, uh, but no more likely to report feelings of fear than nonpartisans and weaker partisans. And we also find that this anger and enthusiasm uh, partially mediates the effect of party identification strength on political behavior, specifically four types of, of non-voting participation uh, measured in the American National Election Studies. Uh, we then test this again to see if these results replicate using just the 2008 American National Election Studies. And again, we find the same pattern. 
Stronger party identification leads to more anger and more enthusiasm, but not any more fear. And this anger and enthusiasm in turn mediates the effect of party identification strength on non-voting participatory behavior. Additionally, uh, in the 2008 study, participants were asked uh, how much they had thought about politics over the course of the election. Uh, and in this case, fear actually has a sizable effect, whereas anger actually has no significant effect. So fear seems to be driving people to think about politics, even if it's not driving them to take much action. We also find that stronger partisans are more likely to report thinking uh, about politics during the election, and this effect is actually mediated by enthusiasm. Altogether, these results tell a very consistent story. Across an experiment and two separate survey-based analyses, we see that stronger partisans experience different emotions than weaker partisans and independents when they think about politics. Specifically, they experience more enthusiasm and more anger rather than fear. Weaker partisans, weaker partisans and independents who experience just as much fear as their stronger partisan counterparts, but not as much anger and enthusiasm, appear to ruminate about politics, but this rumination does not appear to have much of a behavioral consequence. On the other hand, anger and enthusiasm appears to drive party identifiers to engage in non-voting participation, helping to explain what trips the behavioral switch that stimulates partisans to engage in collective action. We believe that this study, along with a number of recent studies on emotion and political behavior, help to bridge the gap between theory and empirics by explaining what motivates political participation. Of course, if political behavior is driven not merely by quote-unquote rational self-interest, but by group interest and emotion, this has important implications for the way we structure democratic institutions. Given the powerful influence that emotions appear to have on political behavior, future studies should seek a greater understanding of the political conditions that stimulate these emotions in the first place. The answer to this question may not only help to determine when people are more likely to take action in politics, but also how to interpret this action from a normative perspective.